right. Fishing historic places on the road. I got my brother Steve with me today. And what we're doing is, yes, the unthinkable. We're going to take a canoe down the mighty Westfield River in the lower reaches of the Westfield. The area that was formerly called the Agawam River. Yep. From the border of Westfield on down to the confluence with the Connecticut River. We're going to get down there. We're going to check out some history. And we're going to catch some fish, hopefully, in this episode of FHP, Fishing Historic Places. So here in West Springfield, we're pretty much at the border with Westfield right now. You know, you recognize some of our local landmarks like San Oco and Little George's Restaurant. And there's the Russian church that is formerly the Big Y. And what we're doing is we're going to put the canoe in right here. We're using a Sports Pal canoe right here. It's got a flat bottom. It's made of aluminum. And we're loaded up. We've got the camera equipment. We've got some fly rods, some spinning rods. We've got some shad tackle. Oh, no. I forgot the shad darts. That means I have to go back to the truck. So I'm going to do that right now. This officer, officer Price has just shown up. He's probably going to cite me for some reason. What we're going to do is we're going to throw it in here and we're going to work our way all the way down to behind um, Bulldog's Trophy. We got complaints about an illegal canoe. <laughs> I was going to say an illegal canoe always sure. raises eyebrows. I just realized I forgot the shad dirt, so I'm going to go back. Um, what are you going to do? Are you going to meet us or try no, to catch I us? I got to come back in at 530. So. Oh, that's a bummer. Well, this is, this is round one because I'm going to want to do another one in the lower river another day see what happens down there and you're the walleye master so you're going to be able to make that happen officer price shows up this is an illegally parked canoe i told him i told him that that it was your responsibility to do what you parked the canoe illegally i I'm really <laughs> you got to get the darts so i'm just sitting here right now and i'm looking at the rocks on the bottom of the river like i always do and I'm seeing something that is of particular interest for all of us. And we're doing historic detection. This is a freshwater mussel. The Westfield River is full of freshwater mussels. And basically, it's a pocket knife. The edge of that mussel is extremely sharp. And the Amerindians around here would use these as scrapers for the pelts of the animals that they had trapped or killed and uh, to prepare fish, which cuts, as you know, very delicately. This right here is a tool. And of course, they used them in salt water too. And we'll find these all along the Westfield River today. The population of mussels in here has not suffered. There's a lot of them. There's a live one right there in the water. I don't know if you can see it. And you saw where we just were, surrounded by the action on Route 20 West. We're twining to Westfield, Stan. It's very busy at this time it of day, is. but check this out right here. This is what the magic of the Westfield River holds for you. There's a beautiful willow hanging out over that channel over there. And the river's going over a nice riffle. And you can see, really, look at these poplar trees right here. It's about as good as it gets. And this is completely forgotten by most people in West Springfield. And that's what we're trying to do today. So we're trying to show you... The Westfield River watershed down on the end. We'll, we're going to take you to the last rapids of the Westfield before it meets the Connecticut exactly River right. today. And there's all kinds of fish that we might be getting ourselves into from shad. I mean, it's possible we could catch a salmon. I'm not going to hold my breath. But there's plenty of smallmouth bass, rainbow trout, and all kinds of trout that make their way down from up above. And they're even starting to stock down at the corner there now, which is an amazing thing. I see some bugs on the water. we got the fly rods. What we want to do right now is take a ride up to where our ring of ice forms just because you guys have seen that ring of ice and we need to see what it looks like when there's no ice on it. Yes, you do. Ascertain why that ring of ice might form. I don't know. Here on the Westfield River. It could be could be wave action. I've heard Perfect. some of my fans tell me that they think a UFO might be landing could under be it. Could be the moon. Could be uh, all kinds of possibilities, but let's get up there. So we are right behind the Sunoco right now, and 
Yep, that car wash gas station combination that we all love so much. Route 20 is humming along. You can see people on their way wherever they're going, going 45 miles an hour. And we are now approaching the pool where the ring of ice forms every winter. You can see up in front of my brother Steve there, there's a, there's a spill in. There's, you see some rapids spilling into this pool. And there's something about the bank here that directs the water. And if I look on my left over here, you can see there's a lot of sand on the bottom. And that sand shows us shallower water. There's deep water under us. The water under us has got to be 10, 12 feet deep right here. And what I think Clear, happens, a tire. I saw it, <laughs> gotta love a good old tire. But what I think is going on here is that this is a big eddy. It's a big whirlpool. And so that when the ice forms, there'll be a little tiny nickel sized hunk of ice and it begins to spin in the very center of this whirlpool. Now it's really hard to see. We need a little bit more calm than we're getting. We got a little bit of wind. I don't even know how deep it is here, Steve. Look at the water depth here. Yeah. It's got to be 15, 20 feet deep. So that's got to be what it is. We got a really deep pool here. And uh, man, oh man, you can catch some nice fish in here. This is, I got to hold some big brown trout. I mean, this is like a pond in the heart of the river. So you can see the main current directing over there on the left side of the river, on the Agawam side of the river. Yeah, that is Agawam, Massachusetts over there, formerly part of West Springfield. So we are starting here, just checking it out. And maybe we want to throw a few casts up there, Steve. I think so. That's enough. The wind is taking us right into the current, which is kind of good. Streamer landed in a perfect spot. You got anything? Anything coming? You got to watch your streamer when you go in the water, because you'll see these fish come whipping out of the rocks. Be ready. Look at those rocks. Likely looking critters right there, Steve. That's the thing about river fishing as opposed to fishing with no current. They hit. like that current makes a... Uh, makes a hit, did you? Yeah. Steve had a hit. Gagged on it. No, it just it followed my lure up. Well, what did it look like? I don't know. I couldn't tell. I can't see in the water. You know, as we look at that, it's got a look about it, but I don't think so. I, I, I think the river's just too deep here. It's, I'm not going to say no, though. That's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be checking out some of the fish wares that I discovered on this river back in 1980 and confirmed by 1995. And uh, we're going to look at, I mean, in fact, right now, on this side of the river, you can see the ground rising up on what's uh, the west end of Robinson State Park. And you're looking at an area that very well had an Indian village on it. At some point, we'll call them Agawans, which is what they were called when Pension met them. You hear all kinds of different things depending on who you read about these native people in our area. I've heard people that are fans of Happy Valley label them as a branch of the Pecumtuck. And why would they be a branch of the Pecumtuck when they just as easily could have been a branch of the Sequin or the Pequin or the Kirpi or come on now. <laughs> so if you live in Amherst or Northampton, you know, you tend to want to make the world revolve around it. What we do know is that these native people had a substantial settlement on the West Springfield side of the Connecticut River, the west side, what became West Springfield and then later Agawam when Pension arrived. And then the Amerindians asked Pension to please move the settlement because he was, well, the settlers were causing some problems. Their cows, their chickens, their pigs were getting out, especially the pigs. And foraging in the Indian corn. 
which caused consternation to the Aguams and Pension, who knew the importance of establishing good relations with the Aguams. Because, of course, he's trying to found a trade colony, and a trade colony has got to be based on trade and good relations with the native people. He politely moves across the river to what is now Court Square in Springfield. The rest is history, except that the Amerindians followed him across the river three years later and established a stockade on what is now Fort Street, Springfield. Interesting. Oh, oh, Fort Street, Did I say Fort Street? I meant uh, Long Hill oh. Street. Yep. We're going to shoot this little rapid right here. Now, this is a, a pool that I've caught some trout in with the fly rod in the last couple of years. There's always trout rising right under that willow tree, which is, it's, the river right now is at a nice height. Look at that, Steve, Steve is pointing out the beautiful whirlpool no, right here. A sandpiper right there. Oh, sandpiper. Like sandpiper, holy cow. Now, wait a minute, we're gonna run into the bank. Yeah, He's getting caught up in the birds again. All right, we can let the river carry us. You can you can cast, I'll, keep, I'll be the guy right now. You throw that spoon. Yeah. There's another one. Sandpiper. Sandpipers. Could be spotted sandpipers. There it is, landing over there. Either one. He's got a spoon on right now, but he's entranced by the sandpiper. Oh yeah. He was just telling me he was at Bear Hole the other day, right up maybe a mile up uh, the stream that's going to come in right down here, and uh, he saw some otters. So that's yep. pretty cool. Otters were always otters are always nice to see. Yeah. Okay, where you are. I was telling you the first otter, the otter that I saw that I could clearly identify was on Old Westville Street, right on the other side of the road from here. And he was running from one side to another of the street, right over the drainage pipe that conduits that brook from up there in Bear Hole down here into the Westville River. So off to our right, you can see the hill rising up right here. And if you look carefully, the, the leaves are on the trees now, so it'll be hard to see. You can see old Route 20 that came across the river down here. And you can still see the road scar from old Route 20 right there, which is pretty interesting. And you can see a turtle over there on that stump. Out there, sunning himself. Doing what turtles do on a nice day like this. Yep, drying himself off. Heating his body temperature up so he can digest his food. Hmm. I thought he was just enjoying a good sun bath. Right, senior year, 155. Here we are, memory 158, lane. 158. So at 163, or was it 67? And then my senior year, 155. Yeah, yeah, and he wrestled uh, Kenny Huddleston there Kenny in the Western Mass Championships, going down in defeat after taking him down. If I had to do it over, Stan, I'd cut the weight and go down to the weight below me. He would go down to 147. I, see a lot of warbling I can hear warblers and stuff all over the place, it's starting to scare me. We're going to hear a lot of. Uh, oh, I just saw a crow. Baltimore Orioles? You might have seen a crow, but it might have been a grackle too. No, it was bigger than a grackle. I know a grackle. Bigger than a grackle. Yeah, I like them. That's my second favorite bird. My favorite bird is the blue jay. Smart, I cute, I thought it'd be the American, heroic. I thought it'd be the American dippers there. Nah. They're out west. The dippers? The dippers live around streams and they go underwater. Under, mm. In fast moving streams. They go underwater to eat the, all the insects. Off. As we're moving along, just imagine being able to kayak this river. Now, my brother and I were talking about it, and really, it wouldn't be very difficult at all for West Springfield to put in an access back at the uh, Russian Church, parking lot between the Russian Church and the Sunoco. I mean, there already is an access there. They wouldn't have to do much. What did you call it, Steve? One of those uh, cutbacks? Cutbacks. So down, down back, back, down, back, or, or just flatten it out a little bit. There's a, there's... If there's a will, there's a way, and I don't think it's going to take that much in terms of cost to do it. And then there have to be a couple other improvements that we're going to talk about when we get down here. But imagine if you could easily 
paddle your way from the border with Westfield down to the Connecticut River and Westfield River's confluence. They also could How nice would that be? paddle right into the Connecticut River and go south into the Silvio Conti Refuge and camp out there because the Silvio Conti has... Oh, you mean the refuge in Long Meadow? Yeah, they've they got, could they, do they that. now have uh, overnight camping spots. All right, so you got river. the option for a regular trek, right a, a kayak there. trek. You could go north and you'd head toward the Holyoke Falls. Yeah. There's one of those crazy sandpipers over there. <laughs> See them? It's over on the shore in the, sh in the shadows. And we're coming to a riffle down here. Now, the first time I found these Amerindian fishwares was back in the winter of 1980 when it got so cold, the whole river froze. And when I say it froze, right in here, it was about seven inches thick ice. Freezing, freezing winter that year. And we got our skates and we decided we were gonna just skate around on this. But what happened was we found as we skated further and further that the waterfalls themselves had frozen. So you had three inches of ice where waterfalls were. And for about a week, we'd be just bold. And one day we decided, instead of just skating up and down, we'd go all the way down to our dam. And we went down probably five sets of rapids doing that, and they were frozen. All of them, maybe a couple had a little water running, but they were frozen. Now, I'm not saying the river was frozen all the way down, but it was frozen so well that we could skate from here all the way to Mittenag Dam, which is pretty cool. And in that process of doing that skate, I found that this river has several piles of rock that are clearly piled by human hands going across the river like somebody was trying to build a big swimming pool. Huh? Well, as I went to college and, you know, my major being history, I studied especially in my master's uh, the religious practices of the Eastern Woodland Indian. And in that degree work that I did, I found all about I found out all about Indian fish wares. And wow, oh, look at that bass swimming right there. Big bass, big smallmouth. Now, this is, that's an old crib right there. You I was going to say, it looks like something like that. Yeah, well, we maybe, just maybe it went over an old here. crib that was probably at one time for some kind of, there's another fish that just took off. So I suggest we throw some, well, I don't know if we should throw cast here yet because it's pooled up. But there were some fish at the head of the pool. Just saw a big bass. The thing about river fish is they're pretty aggressive. Bass in the river, once it's time for them to do their thing, do their thing very well. They don't, they're not shy. They eat. And they're fun to catch. They got a lot of spunk in them in the rivers. So look, we're coming along the corner here and you can see this rock outcropping in front of my brother Steve. That's sandstone, a sandstone outcropping. Yeah. And a, a swallow sand just went into the water. What kind of swallow? I don't know. There's a lot of swallows here are. in uh, the Westfield yeah. River Basin. I, I think saw it's barn some swallow. the other day. Barn swallow. I think. I oh, saw some the other day on the upper Westfield River. Yeah, look at him. Nope, it's a tree swallow. A tree swallow flying in front of no, Steve. No, he was right the first time. He was right the first time. Barn he swallow. makes a correction, then he recorrects. So we're going to say that that is, in fact, a barn swallow as he originally identified. Always go with your first guess. Go with your first guess. They tell you that. Let's take and throw some casts right here. You know, the current is being forced to push from one side to the other. We got some down timber over there. I'm going to drop the grub over there. And I'm going to let it sink a little and I'm going to bring it in. Wait for my buddy, Mr. Smallmouth, to give it a bang. Great hey, tree folk calls him. He's got tree frogs calling. He's got swallows in the air. Notice how quickly those binocs come up. He doesn't care. We got a merganser, female. She might be on a nest. Really? Yeah. So right here. And then some mallards, I think. We got ducks. We got a grackle. I just saw a grackle. Got a herd of red-bellied woodpecker. You did? And an oriole. As you guys know, my brother Stephen is a local bird expert. He loves his natural history. I do too, but uh, he went to, hey, look at that, Steve. A beaver has knocked down that tree. It, it looks has, like an oak tree too, doesn't yeah, it? Has, it has taken it down and 
stripped of its bark. Yeah, it looks like an oak. They don't usually go after oak. That's weird. With all the other species of trees that he could have chosen, he, he attacked an oak. The thing about paddling a canoe is you don't want to over dip your paddle, really. I mean, we're not in a race right now, so all we're doing is keeping a steady speed. And you don't want to basically tire yourself out by deciding that you're going to go crazy. I, if I'm in the back, if I paddle too hard, I'm going to overwhelm my brother. Make him work really hard. There's no need of that. The supposed to be the steer. Yeah, I know. I'm paddling and I'm steering, right? If I want to go left, I just paddle a little harder. I go, go right, I paddle a little harder. Go left, back more a little bit, work. Paddle a little softer. Well, you're not just paddling. You're looking for obstacles. Remember that. Oh, yeah. And birds. This river, he's looking for obstacles, but as, as he just pointed out, birds. He just missed one in here. He had a nice smallmouth on that came out and whacked his spoon. So we're going to throw a couple more casts in this pollen-soaked huh. cove where we have, you know, some, as he pointed out, there's a nice eddy here. And what that means to fish, when you see an eddy, is you see food. That's to a fish, food. That means that there's things floating down the river a lot of, oh bad man, there's a big bass under this log. There was a big bass under this. It just came shooting out. That had to be like, there's another one there. Look at him. Scared That's a him. sucker. That what you right did, Steve. Look at the three mallards sitting there like idiots. Yeah. Well, hopefully we should bring the babies back. There's that cove back there. I think that's an island. It that's the be. beginning of an island. I think it is. Hopefully we should go that way. Yeah, it is. Mergansers are very pretty. <laughs> we're gonna go that way? No, right? we're going to the left because our first fish wear is right up here. I'm sorry, I'm back orange. Talk about quality of life in West Side, right? Yeah. yeah. This is a swimmable, beautiful river. Yeah. Since they stopped Strathmore from dumping the. Uh, to die into it. I remember coming by it in college and it would be red one day and yellow another day and magenta and every color of the, or the rainbow. You guys I, got a canoe right here? Yeah. Um, people are taking advantage of this. Now this is a riffle up here Steve so let's let the river take us. And I believe that this is one of the fish wares. Now let's start start throwing some casts here. You got a you got a draw out. Whenever you have a draw out like this you're going to have fish because the oxygen level goes up, right? Because the river starts moving quicker. So you're going to have something here. Oh, an eagle. Look at the bald eagle, people. Beautiful. Big bald eagle. Just like the doctor ordered, right? Yeah, it's at least three to four years old. That's why we do this, because you know what? You can catch fish and you can check out historic sites, but you can see natural splendor as well. Let us through it. And this is just a pebble spill right here. The river is just going down. Nice, though, nice. This, this is going to possibly have some fish action, especially where it enters the deeper water. So we're in a canoe that floats in only about two inches of water, even less. So we're in no danger of bottoming out unless there's a, a boulder coming up. I see a boulder coming up down here. That... So we got some nice depth right here. The river comes in up against the bank, giving us some depth. This is like where you missed that small mouth. Wood ducks. Oh yeah. The rats. Thing is, we never know where we're going to get them. We never know where we're going to get the fish. We're, we're prospecting. It's not like we've been down here a lot. What we're doing is going to take a little navy. I got it. So you can see we got this nice riffle right here. You don't have to do anything. Just stay what you're, stay doing what you're doing. Keep casting. When we were younger, I used to like make my brother Steven do all the stuff I didn't want to do. 
Now he gets to just keep casting. Just keep casting. He's like, when's he gonna yell at me about something? <laughs> what happens when you're the oldest? You have to like take charge of the younger kids. It's important. My brother Tommy was a rogue. Steven had to take charge of him too. All right, we got crossing currents here. We got a current coming in from left and in right. So watch this carefully. All right, be careful here. Currents are gonna give the boat a little bit of a push. Beautiful, isn't this something? Look at that, beautiful river. And definitely prospect right here. There's gonna be something in this. I wish I had, I wish I was sitting where you are with the streamer, because we have some nice water here. I would think. Great blue heron, just hanging out. Steve pointed it out. Those are troublemakers, those birds. Mm -hmm. They eat my fish. They eat my fish. And they don't catch, ooh, there's a nice bass or um, another fall fish. Suck. Look at the size of those fish. Oh, what? those are shad. Oh. Those are shad. Yeah, come over the, they came over the dam. Those are big. Yeah, those are shad. They are big. Yeah. We'll have a ton of them down below the dam. We don't have to worry about trying to catch them up here. <clears throat> those are American shad. Good eye. I was looking the wrong way when, when they showed up. Hard to but miss you can them, see it's getting sandy now, yeah. yeah. So it's actually getting really good for sight fishing. Are they like a sand bottom? No, no, they're looking to spawn. I, I don't know particularly. What's that? Is, it, is that the blue heron? Yeah, that's the blue heron. That's what I'm sitting there. I don't know what they like. They probably like pebbles. You would think they'd like pebbles. And we have a lot of areas that we've gone by that have a lot of pebbles. But I don't know how far up they're, they're going to want to travel. They can't go further than the Strathmore Dam in Westfield because no. there's no fish ladder there, right? No. So they can get up over the rapids there that me and you went to one time. Right. Oh, look at all the shad here. Look at them in front of you. They're going to be swinging to your left. There's a big school of shad. I love seeing this. You know, I, I, I remember seeing the first shad in the upper Westfield after they put in the fish ladder. You talk about a celebration. You know, and something awesome that, that nobody celebrates because there's only, it's like a club of people that, there they are right there, Steve, to the right. You see oh, where yeah, they yeah, are? Yeah, a, yeah, big a school of shad, maybe 30 shad, a couple of big females. And uh, when that fish ladder was dedicated and operational for the first time, the first shad got into the Westfield River. You know, there's another bunch right below us, big bunch of them. I can't see that because I got a glare. Keep your eye right there, right there's one. So the first shad came into the Upper Westfield River since like 1850 whatever, you know, when they put the dam in, 1853 or 1855, whenever they put that dam in. It is pretty deep in here. It's pretty deep right here, yeah. But it's going to get pretty shallow. Oh, there's, a, there's an eagle. There's an eagle. Not the same one, right? It's immature. Yeah. Beautiful. It's coming right over us here. Beautiful. First year bird? First year eagle. Yeah, first year. He doesn't have his plumage yet. No, it's like from last year. So he's born. Okay. Last now year here, I believe, is one of the wares. Now, Amer Indians have been fishing this river for thousands of years. And one of their techniques is to build what we would call a trickle dam that directs the fish toward one side of the river, the other side of the river, or right up the middle. And what they do is they pile stone. And that diverts the fish into their fish traps that they make. Or they could spear the fish, or they could net the fish. They did all those techniques and more. They actually use fish hooks too. There's examples of fish hooks that they carved. Look at that. Wow. So we have to watch this now. We might want to go to the right here. Definitely go to the right. And we can see, yeah, look at the piles of, rock, piles of rocks here. Interesting. Got to watch these boulders. So we want to shoot down the middle. We don't want to be cracking the boulders. And we definitely don't want to hit them sideways. Beautiful. All right, we're good. We're good right here. Today we got, I don't see any big rocks here. We just want to keep it straight. And we're 
fine. Now that's a good spot to cast, Pete, right there. Fire in there. You can see this area where the current is being blocked by a rock and it's creating a beautiful line of bubbles. Again, bubbles mean food. Yes! He's got one on here. Looks like a smallmouth bass. Now give yourself six feet of line. Look at him. He's an animal. <laughs> Massive. Show the camera now when you get him out of the water. Just pull him out. He's not going to snap your line. Well, he's not a blue fish. He doesn't have teeth. Get him up and show the camera. Big, huge. He's pulling out some hogs here, people. A little yep. higher, bring your hands up. Yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah. Devour it. So this fish wear extends all the way across the river from the West Springfield side to the Agawam side here. Really something else. Piles of stone. And you can see that this trickle dam is made by people. This is not a natural formation. What we're going to do is go right over here. We're going to take a right here, get in behind it so that we can take a look at it a little bit more closely. So looking here, from this angle, you can really see it. These rocks are piled beautifully, and they form a sea, so that the current comes down into them and then gets directed toward one side. And what the native people would do is build these, and then they'd line them with fish traps, or they would use them for spearing purposes. Move forward a little, Steve. See all these uh, lines in the mud? Yeah, those are the muscles, right? Yep, because my muscles. There's so many muscles in here. Well, I'm going to get out right here and stand on it. Okay, you can grab a hold of it. We're on a rock, so you don't even have to. I'm going to hand you the camera. So here you go. It's on. So if you look at where I am, I'm walking on a pile of stones that are clearly piled from the Agawam side of the river to my left across to the West Springfield side of the river. Now at low water, it's very, very possible to just play in this river. In the summer, the Westfield River, because it's got a very uh, sloping, very steep watershed, right? While prone to flooding in the springtime, becomes very shallow in the summer, which allows people to build trickle dams. And the native people put up these trickle dams to take advantage of the big fish migrations. The shad, the blueback herring, alwives, lampreys, possibly sturgeon. Salmon. And I throw salmon last in because from what we know biologically about the salmon run in the Connecticut River now, it doesn't seem like the salmon were as numerous as we had thought they were. The shad seems to be the big fish that supported the native people here in the riverine systems of the Connecticut River. The salmon seem to have started a little further north. What? I'm not saying there weren't any salmon. There's records of them, but just not in the numbers that you hear. Anyway, I'll get in an argument with somebody about the salmon. But the point is, this is some beautiful, beautiful example right behind me of Amerindian fishing techniques and the mark of the past on the present. If you didn't know what you were looking at, you'd still think, wow, look at this. This is so weird. Now, over on one side, it's sand. On the other side, it's sand. And yet, here's this pile of rocks that crosses the river. Wow. And it was done by the hand of man, by the Amerindian.